So last video we talked about how I would do a sketch when I'm working out a character. So this video is how we would do the initial block out. And I'll explain what a block out is as the video runs. It's a time lapse, which I don't normally do, but we'll uh, see how we get on. So let's dive right in and take a look at blocking out Roger Rabbit. So let's start with the end. So by the end of this video, we're going to have all of these little parts put together. Again, at the start, I said it's going to be a time lapse, but what I'm, I've just put outline on so you can see. So I'm going to work through how I make some of these choices of, of the different bits um, of the body to use and why, and why we even do this. So what we'll do is we'll watch a time lapse and I'll talk you through how I approach something like this from my own sketch. Okay, so it is um, a time lapse, as I've already said, and um, it's going to be about 50 minutes compressed to about eight or 10 minutes. If you want to follow on with any of this and you want to do any of this and you don't understand tools that I'm using, then there's plenty of videos on this channel. And obviously Dave Reed has got a lot of videos and small robot studios. Between us all, we've covered quite a lot of this. So this is more about process. Um, this is the kind of thing I cover in my T-Rex course, which is very much about not the individual tools, but about how we get from you know the start to the end. So all I'm doing is I'm blocking out the character. So I'm finding, based off my own sketch, I'm finding a, a shape that I want. Uh, like, so for the head, for example, was just spheres. And then for the arm, as I said right from the start, I'm gonna use tubes. And the great thing about tubes is you can, you can set the radius up here. If you hit all three buttons, you can literally make each point along the, the tube a different scale scale and that's how I would shape the arms like that. That's a very important one to learn if you haven't done that. Look look up a tube video if, if that's not something you're familiar with. Basic torus for the end of this portion here, for the end of the, the glove. Uh, very, very simple primitive from up here. The hands, I'm going to use uh, very simple primitives like boxes and tubes and spheres. So I'm going to start naming some of the parts as you can see. So the box is, is, is at the moment it, it's got the geometry it came with. So I've just lowered the geometry right down and then subdivided it. And that gives me much more rounded edges. The thumb, as you can see, the base of the, or this part of the, fat, the fatty pad here is just a sphere that's compressed. And then the first part of the thumb, second part of the thumb, just spheres. And they will all be merged together once we do a voxel merge. Then once I'm happy with that, what I probably should have done is make it fatter at the back and thinner at the front. But, um, uh, you know, that can all be done later. So for fingers, I chose cylinders. And because he's flexing his hands back like this, I can't even do it with my fingers. But he's flexing them back. Rather than it being like this, he's got them the other way like this. So I wanted these bits open. As you can see, I've left little gaps like that. And then what I'll do is I'll take all three of them and I'll voxel merge them together and then smooth it. And I get that little crease the opposite way. So that finger is definitely bent back. Move tool, just tweak it around so it fits the, the, the hand. And then obviously what we're gonna want then is we're gonna want three of them. So we'll move the pivot point to the base, duplicate it or clone it from here, and then make three of them. And that's the hand flopping out that way. So as I say, I needed it fatter at this end. So at that point, I've just, um, just used the move tool to do that. And then I've voxel merged all of this bit together. Again, if you don't know that, voxel merge and Boolean, two different things now in Nomad. They used to be just voxel merge. We're just doing voxel remesh here. So have a look at that if you, you know, earlier videos, if that's something you're struggling with. Stick it down in the comments. If it's something that you want more of, then, you know, we can do more videos just on that subject. So scale the hand in place. I'm always looking at this reference here. I'm kind of, it won't be exactly right because it's really hard. This is a cartoon um, shape and it's very hard to get that shape when, when you're in 3D. So there are some tools in here that you won't have seen, stuff that's in the beta. Um, and Stefan, who develops it, is you know he's fine with us showing this stuff all along the way. So if you see anything that you don't recognize, then uh, you know I probably won't answer you, but you you might see some goodies in here um, that, that you might recognize from other programs. Um, so next, I've decided to do the hair. So as I said in video one, I'm going to take a cube flatten it down and then just cut out the shape and just completely delete it out. And then a little bit more. This is just using the trim tool, basically. And that gives me that cut out shape. 
so I can I can literally make the shape smooth it down and then use the move tool just to pull it around and that works perfectly well for, for, for that kind of shape. We'll do a lot more on that, maybe even replace it with something else when, when, when we're ready. But when you're doing a block out like this, that's absolutely fine because we may move everything in this scene. The, these are almost like jigsaw pieces that allow us to then bring it together as, as, as the final jigsaw. So on here now, I'm, I made a bit of a mistake there. I put it in the wrong place, but I'm doing the ear. And this is what I was talking about, about the profile. So I'm, I'm using a tube and basically the end of the tube is this shape called profile from here. And then I use it to make almost like a, like a strap or a ribbon. And then I put an indent in the ear by using that. Again, I can sculpt on it all sorts, but the closer you can get to your end shape before you start sculpting, the better. So you can see there, I just duplicated it with clone. And then I'm just moving the points while before you ever validate, just move the points in, into place like that. And what you can do as well, you could keep another one, um, you know, make it and then hide it. And then you've got it for, you know, for, for later if needed. You can actually see me naming, which those of you that followed me for a few years, you'll know I'm terrible at that. So you can see I am getting better. I'm learning to get through the things that are holding me back in life. So naming is one of them. Um, I noticed at Adobe Max, you can get t-shirts saying, you know, name your layers. So, you know, ob obviously it's a, it's an industry. Uh, I'm not just the only one suffering with that affliction. Um, so I'm now using the move tool, um, just getting the face a little bit closer to the shape, uh, you know, that, that, that's in the reference image. Uh, take your time with, with things like this. Now I did choose to use a cube for my sketching. And in the end, I just used a sphere and just pulled it into shape and voxel remeshing it and then smoothing it down into shape. So that gives me the jaw, the basis of the, you know, the basic shape of the jaw. Now, something about this that's interesting is I'm sculpting this in pose. So you're not seeing me use symmetry. So quite often we would do this symmetrically and then move it into pose. And you, you can do whichever you choose, whatever works well. So the feet are just a cylinder that's that's compressed down vertically. I masked off the back and pulled it forward, as you saw there. Lower poly, subdivide it, and that's the foot. It gives you a nice big, you know, big, big rounded clown foot, I suppose, is, is the right way to say it. And I've not even tried to line them up very well yet. I've just put them in place. Now, the most complex part of this model is the bottom end of the pants because it doesn't follow any really logical. It's not a, particularly a tube. It might be two tubes, if anything. Um, so I figured it would be good for that just to make a sphere and just sculpt my way out of this, this, this solution or sculpt a solution for it is the way to say it. So I'm literally there just using the move tool and then using the trim tool to trim off the bottom. And then again, a combination of, I oh, just, just wanted to tweak the body a bit there. Um, but I, I, I've merged the body and the, the, the lower end so I can now sculpt on it. And now I'm using the clay tool, you know, quite, quite light, not, not going too aggressive on anything. And I'm putting in these kind of ridges here, so the folds of the end of the, of, of the cloth. And I'm trying to work out how the cloth is folding. So I'm giving it its volume so that I can, I can then move that into place and then use the crease tool. And the crease tool will give me a little bit, you know, it will help me um, really define the creases and the folds. You can see that I'm using the crease tool now and then smoothing that back. So it doesn't look particularly good. It looks blobby. So, you know, at this point, what I'd normally do is start thinking about something like the flatten tool. Um, I'm using the move tool there to get the weight coming to this left hand side. And then I'm using the flatten tool, as I said, to, you know, to, to start getting some of the plane changes so that, you know, this from the front of the, 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 the trousers to the, to, to, to the main part of them. You can see that just helps. It catches light drop shadows and it you know it, it it kind of really helps you to form the you know the the, the bottom end of, of of these trousers and that's it so that took me 50 minutes in real time took you about eight minutes to watch it and as you can see all those individual parts now are ready for the the, the main bit of sculpting but we've already worked out that entire character. Everything from now on will be detailing. So with blocking out, what I always try to say is blocking out is one of everything, the right length. So we're looking at the, you know, the right length of limb. It might still be that it's not quite in position yet. There still might be quite a lot of tweaking to do in terms of locating it or scaling it in, in place. 
but it's in the right place generally. This limb is the right length. Now we've still got that as a live tube, so I could now validate that, and that's now a solid piece of geometry. If you look with wireframe on, it's quite a nice geometry as well. Um, but it's not attached to the body yet, and I don't want that to happen yet. Same with this arm, we could just validate that one. Um, ears, we could validate them. I won't do any more of that, because I'm, I'm gonna do that in the next video. But we've got enough to now start playing around with the, with, the, with the posing. So one thing I want to mention is that I've started to group things. So in here, to add a group, you go add and then group there. And then what that gives you is everything now for the head. So that would be the ears, the spheres of the eyes, the nose, and then the, you know all the spheres of the head are all under one group. And I've moved the pivot point to the base of the the back in the middle there and that means it's where the neck would be and that allows me now to to turn the head like it's posed so if i wanted to look at it in this position or looking down at me uh you know i can work things out because it's all grouped um it, you know you don't have to do that you can do it individually and you can even merge them all together if you want with join here but i like this grouping when you're doing blocking out because it just gives you simple shapes all grouped together and can be ungrouped in just by literally dragging say for example that ear you don't want it in you just drag it out so it works perfectly well um you know it f f gives you the flexibility is probably what i'm saying and that means it feels like a lot less pieces so we've got the torus for the hands so they they probably could be joined to the hands now so i'll move all them up to to, to the top so we've got two hands two toruses which are the, you know the back of the glove We've got the whole of the head. Um, there's actually a spare one there. I didn't even know I had that, so that can even be deleted. Oops, cloned it. Not doing very well with that bit, am I? Um, so that's the head. And we'll shut that down so we don't have to see it. Um, and then what else have we got? We've got down here, we've got the arm tube, which is now made permanent tube. Pop that pin on so we can see it open. Uh, oh, that's the other wrist I hadn't seen that so we'll move that to the top they're all now together at the top they, they could go in a group even and then we've got the last few bits are the body and then the feet and that's it that's the whole block out done and all of my working out is done I can now pose it um, you know take my time and just make it work for my illustration now it might not because don't forget this is perspective and this is orthographic and you can snap it to all the different angles, but it won't match this in every angle. What you could do, what can help, is if you go add, and then if you add in a plane, and then make that plane, we'll validate it, because we don't need to do anything with it. We make that plane bigger, and then bring the plane down here. This might help you with your perspective, and as you can see, that perspective is way off. It's not going to be what you think it is. You know, the transition from 3D, uh, from 2D to 3D is never a comfortable one. It's always a compromise one way or, an, or another. What you've got to do is do your best. Your job is to do your best based on that. You can change things like, for example, your angle. So that's changing the, 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 the um, field of view. So again, that will skew it a little bit. So be careful doing all this, especially if you're going to do things like 3D printing. You don't want to go too far now. That looks closer to the, what it was, but that camera now is quite extreme. And you can see the rabbit's head looks extreme. Um, so I wouldn't recommend doing that you know, too much. I'd be a little bit careful with that. What you want is the overall effect to work for what your end use is. Um, you know, if you're trying to match that image exactly, so if you're doing an illustration for someone, you've got to match that image, then just lay it over and forget, disregard your perspective. If it's got to be on a turntable and it's, you know, it's going to be shown to a lot of people that way, if you're going to do something like this, let's turn turntable on, um, pop it on. If it's going to be something like this, spinning around, then you might have to make some compromises. You're going to have to make it work from all of these different angles. But we can have a look at that because what we'll do is we'll probably get rid of the reference image in a minute and we'll just make it work for us once once we start or, or on the next videos, once we start getting into the, to the next bit. And also, it still doesn't look completely like Roger Rabbit. There's still things like little bits of teeth and tongue to do. But in terms of the block out, We've got one of everything. There is a tail missing, I've just thought. 
Um, but other than that, we're, we're, we're in a fairly good place. So next video, I'll look into starting to detail some of these parts and actually doing the final finished pose. I really hope you're enjoying these videos and if you are, please give us a thumbs up. It does help us to get in front of other people who will like this kind of content. And if you like it enough to give us a thumbs up, then please subscribe down below and it does help us to build this channel. Thank you so much for watching and have a great week.